And now we have Venomoth. This poisonous tiger moth has been around since the first generation, most notably known as a member of Koga's team and then Jasmine's team. In the anime, Koga's Venonat evolved instantly into Venomoth, so that must have been some secret ninja technique or something. But anyways, today we're going to examine Venomoth's impact on the competitive scene. So how good was Venomoth actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. All right, here it comes, the big U. Unfortunately, Venomoth was completely unusable in the first generation of OU. It's weak to Psychic, which in itself disqualifies pretty much anything not named Victory Bell. But even outside of that, Venomoth just had no good traits. Its stab was beyond atrocious. It was frail, it had no usable resist, and its move pool wasn't anything special besides Sleep Powder, which wasn't anywhere near useful enough to make Venomoth at all worthwhile. It was wasn't even good in Yu as the tier's abundance of psychics made Venomoth's weakness to them similarly backbreaking and still had no offensive presence to speak of whatsoever, making the arduous task of switching it in safely not worthwhile at all. So Gen 1 Venomoth had it rough and then some. Venomoth didn't get any breaks at all in Gen 2. Now sure, it got some actual stab moves this time, as Sludge Bomb is a great move, and Hidden Power Bug would get the job done, while Baton Pass is one of the best moves in the game. However, it could only pass Substitute or Curse, and while that alongside its newfound stabs were nice, they didn't come close to making up for the fact that it was still fragile and weak, with a thoroughly unimpressive, unthreatening move pull. And honestly, that was pretty much it. It just didn't offer anything at all offensively or defensively. OU was a foregone conclusion, as there was no way it was ever getting by Snorlax, Zapdos, Skarmory, and just about every Pokemon in OU with its awful stats and move pull, with even Sleep Powder being less valuable now that Rest and Sleep Talk were everywhere. And UU wasn't much better either. It was hit hard from every angle and walled by just about everything, with Needle Queen, Quillfish, Magneton, and many more just completely devouring it. It couldn't even use its newfound Bug Stab in Hidden Power Bug to threaten Psychic types like Hypno and the Slow Twins because of its crippling psychic weakness. Not to mention, it was a lot weaker than Scyther, who also had Swords Dance, had an Earthquake and Spikes immunity, and wasn't psychic weak. And even in NU, Venomoth wasn't exactly unusable, but it wasn't good either. The tier's lower power level let it baton pass curses, which could be pretty effective since fire types weren't too keen to switch in immediately and get sleep powdered, but Venomoth was generally better off at helping its teammates rather than trying to do anything itself. So if it wasn't powering something like Firo or Pidgeot up with Curse Pass, it could try and spread status, since it could dish out Sleep, Paralysis, and Poison. However, it was unspectacular at best, although it at least finally wasn't completely unusable, which from Venomoth's perspective could be seen as a win. The third generation was faster and stronger, and Venomoth got buffs which were Signal Beam as its new bug stab, slightly outdamaging Hidden Power Bug and allowing it to use a different Hidden Power for coverage, Silver Wind, which was weaker than HP Bug but had the 10% chance to boost all of Venomoth's stats, which it could then baton pass, stat boosting Pinch Berries, which it could also baton pass, and indirectly, its Sleep Powder got stronger since Sleep Talk was no longer omnipresent and able to call rest. However, suffice to say, Venomoth wasn't going to be leaving any sort of impact on UU, much less OU, given its thoroughly unimpressive stats and weakness late in typing. At least it was decent in NU though. Its primary function was once again Baton Pass, helping its teammates out given its inability to consistently accomplish much of its own. It could disable something with Sleep Powder, set up a substitute, which it continued to do until it hits its Pinch Berry, usually Lychee Berry, and maybe fish for a Silver Wind Omni Boost along the way. This wasn't game breaking or anything, but it could make a good Pokemon like Hitmonchan or Pupitar more threatening, especially if Venomoth got lucky with Silverwind. Now, while Baton Pass was what it was best at, Baton Passing wasn't the only thing Venomoth could pull off, as its quadruple fighting weakness made it a great switch to the dangerous Hitmonchan, allowing it to support its teammates by spreading triple status. It wasn't much, but it was something, and it was better than the previous generation, so at least there's that. And as if Venomoth didn't have it bad enough, Generation 4 introduced Stealth Rock, which was on every team, and tore 25% of its health away upon switching in. On the plus side, while it didn't get anything world-breaking, Venomoth did get some nice boosts. The new physical special split allowed it to finally use its stabs off of its significantly higher special attack stat. It also received a new bug stab, Bug Buzz, which was just as powerful as Sludge Bomb. Furthermore, Venomoth got the Tinted Lens ability, which effectively 
effectively cancelled out resistances to its attacks, indirectly making it stronger, as the new item's life orb and choice specs also did, except directly. Finally, Venomoth also got some excellent new moves, U-Turn, Roost, and most notably, an entry hazard, Toxic Spikes, renowned for the devastation they could cause with a single layer. Now believe it or not, this was enough to get it the smallest of smallest niches in OU. Lead Roserade was the primary offensive Toxic Spike setter, thanks to Sleep Powder and Roserade's solid base 90 speed. Turns out, Venomoth had those exact same qualities, plus it had the benefit of its ability Shield Dust, meaning it couldn't be flinched by Jirachi's Iron Head. This was fairly crucial, as that was how Jirachi often attempted to deny Roserade's setup on turn 1, and being able to sleep it instead was a huge point in Venomoth's favor. Of course, Roserade was a far better overall Pokemon, given its superior typing for mid-game switches against water and electric moves, as well as its powerful Leaf Storm off of a high special attack stat, but Venomoth did have this one niche for Toxic Spike's offense, and that was huge. Venomoth was also semi-decent in UU for the first time. With Tinted Lens, it could act as a full choice specs Yanmega. It had a decent speed tier, getting the jump on common Pokemon like Milotic and the plethora of base 80s such as Mesprit, Venusaur, Blaziken, and Kabutops, allowing it to throw around its effectively unresisted bug buzzes. Plus, it could still disable something with Sleep Powder and could keep up momentum with U-Turn. Its problems were that it was still tough to get on the field, and its power left something to be desired even when its attacks were hitting everything neutrally. For instance, even with Stealth Rock, it wasn't even close to guaranteeing a 2-hit KO on a specially defensive Arcanine, nor would it be able to 2-hit KO max HP Milotic, and it wasn't even close to guaranteeing a 4-hit KO on Registeel. However, with Spike support and some good playing, Venomoth could cause a decent number of teams some issues. Its poison typing was also of great team support, as it was able to absorb opposing Toxic Spikes, thus allowing its team to run a non-Venusaur Grass type, such as Leafeon or Torterra. Now, while Venomoth was decent in UU, it certainly didn't have the usage required to make it a true UU Pokemon, and thus it dropped to NU. And with the tier's overall power, speed, and bulk lower, it was even better. It got the jump on many common offensive Pokemon, such as Gardevoir, Medicham, Pinsir, and Magmortar, giving it more opportunity to wreak havoc. With Stealth Rock up, virtually nothing could switch into its Tinted Lens specs Bug Buzz. It didn't just hit things neutrally though. Bug Buzz was a great weapon because it was super effective against the tier's best walls, Slow King, Hypno, and Grumpig, while neutral tanky Pokemon like Regirock and Vileplume struggled to tank it as well. And while it didn't dominate the metagame, DPP NU Venomoth was a great Pokemon in the tier, capping off a banner generation for it. It went from barely usable in NU to having small niches in OU and UU while being legitimate in NU. Generation 5 gifted Venomoth one of the best moves in the game, the special attack, special defense, and speed boosting Quiver Dance. Now, Venomoth wasn't going to be making use of it in OU since fellow moth Volcarona existed, but the lower tiers were in for some pain. In fact, as funny as it might sound to hear that Venomoth terrorized the tier, that's exactly what happened in the new sub UU tier, RU. With its solid speed tier and sleep powder, with sleep being essentially a KO thanks to Gen 5's mechanics, Venomoth Venomoth was able to force a Quiver Dance with ease. It could then threaten a sweep, yes Venomoth of all things sweeping teams, or it could baton pass the boost and make one of its teammates incredibly scary. Venomoth was far too difficult for RU to handle and got banned before Black and White 2 even came around. That's right, Venomoth wasn't just dominant in a tier, it was so dominant it was banned. And it didn't end there though, it was also a threat in UU. Roar users were more common in the tier, but even those only had a 50% chance to work thanks to Venomoth's new ability, Wonder Skin, meaning that Venomoth could simply pummel a Blastoise attempting to roar and potentially just beat it. This would be after Venomoth had shut something down with a sleep, too. Between Wonder Skin, Sleep, and the speed boost alongside Venomoth's nice speed stat, it was ridiculously difficult to prevent a pass, especially if it quiver dance on the first turn, as the opponent switched in their sleep fodder, only to sleep them the following turn and then set up another quiver dance, thus allowing it to outspeed an otherwise faster choice guard like Mian Shao or Flygon. It also had the option of running Charty Berry, so it could easily eat a Stone Edge and pass out against them safely. Once it had passed the bulky, powerful special attackers that appreciated a speed, bulk, and power boost, most notably Needle Queen or Togekiss, the opponent was in a world of trouble. Venomoth established itself as a different kind of dangerous, but one of the tier's most dangerous nonetheless, seriously improving two generations in a row, now being too good for RU and becoming a legitimate UU threat. 
in a game where the little guy often gets kicked harder and harder as time goes on, it's heartwarming to see something like this, where the bug poison moth rises up. And despite not getting anything new in Gen 6, well, besides a fairy type resistance, which was admittedly nice, Venomoth would not be denied. It continued to quiver dance and baton pass all over its lower tier competition, this time in a power crept UU, where it was now baton passing one of the most incredible boosting moves in the game to former OU monsters such as Infernape and the tier's best Pokemon, Hydreigon, as well as other immense threats like Curem and Mega Sceptile. Its solid speed meant even the blazing fast Mega Aerodactyl would not outrun it after a Quiver Dance, meaning stopping the pass post dance was as difficult as ever, and Venomoth got plenty of opportunity to grab that dance, which completely walled Whimsicott, and there were plenty of slow walls like Alomomolo running around. Heck, it could even grab multiple dances thanks to the special defense boost, which it could easily stack several of since it would be moving before opposing special attackers and be taking less from each subsequent hit. As always, Sleep Powder was immensely helpful in letting it get free setup, and Venomoth naturally naturally outsped plenty of Pokemon, so outspeeding was not a catch-all option. It was a nightmarish Pokemon to deal with. Venomoth's quiver passing was in fact so effective and so difficult to stop that Venomoth as a whole was banned from UU, despite actually being in NU at the time of the ban. This wasn't after months of deliberation either. This was still early in XY UU, long before Oraz even came out. Nobody was sad to see Venomoth go, except maybe those who enjoyed making use of its talents. Eventually, the move Baton Pass was repeatedly neutered until it was banned as a whole, allowing Venomoth to come back, using Quiver Dance for its own sweeping as opposed to passing. This was still a viable option because of how many avenues Tinted Lens opened up. It wound up being too good for RU again, with players jumping at the chance to rid themselves of a Pokemon with meager responses and checks. Even something as on paper good against Venomoth as Flechinder couldn't handle Sludge Bomb, and this was after Venomoth had already slept something. It forced a ton of strain on team building, and thus was quickly banned shortly after its reintroduction, making for a second consecutive RUBL placement. Yes, RUBL meaning it didn't become a legitimate part of UU again. And while it had potential to really make some teams miserable, like with how it could potentially knock out Mega Aerodactyl after a Quiver Dance with an insect plate attached, it often just couldn't fit all the moves it wanted. Sometimes it even dished Sleep Powder for Substitute so it could set up all over Porygon 2, instead of getting permanently walled and thunder with, but ditching Sleep Powder wasn't ideal. But then again, neither was ditching Substitute. It had a small niche and didn't see much tournament play at all. However, this was coming after it had dominated Yu so much it had to be banned from it. Yu could only accept the heavily neutered version of Venomoth, which was a victory in and of itself and Venomoth wouldn't be doing any baton passing in Generation 7 thanks to the move quickly being banned as a whole. But amazingly, it didn't even need it. It was banned from RU almost instantly, but it was no longer destined to wear the RU BL tag for a third straight generation. Nope, now Venomoth was a genuine UU threat. While it was still frail and not lightning fast, meaning it was always going to be prone to priority like Bisharp, Sucker Punch, and Scarfers like Crocodile, it was still an immensely dangerous sweeper. This was thanks to the addition of Zemu. Even with Tinted Lens, Venomoth was often left wanting for power, as it often came up just short against Pokemon that were naturally bulky, but weren't supposed to be taking boosted attacks. Z moves were the buff it needed, as these moves were strong enough naturally, but when you take away the opponent's ability to resist them, they just become ridiculous. And that is what Venomoth now held in its, uh, wings. With Bugginium Z, Venomoth went from coming up just short with Bug Buzz, to ripping through the competition with a savage spinout that depleted opponent's HP HP stats to zero before you could say Scizor, which was one of the naturally bulky Pokemon and now had no trouble of disposing of. Other important targets included Terrakion, Empoleon, Rotom Heat, and Tentacruel, and if it held back its Sleep Powder for Blissey, Venomoth could potentially even beat the Pink Blob. Venomoth's stabs were also excellent at naturally threatening many top tier metagame constituents. Bug Buzz didn't need to be Z-boosted to destroy Latias, while Togekiss, Primarina, and Mega Altaria did not want to take a Sludge Bomb. This made it easy for Venomoth to coast to a sweep if it was able to land its Savage Spin out on the target standing in its way. Teams were not exactly loaded front to back with Venomoth's checks, making that one use of the Z move often all it needed to blow through the rest of the opposing team. Venomoth also enjoyed the wider distribution of Defog, which made it significantly easier to keep Stealth Rock off the field, crucially letting it stay healthy enough to take one priority move, most notably Scizor's Bullet Punch. Now sure, Venomoth had its problems, as in addition to the aforementioned priority and Scarf issue, it was 
wasn't guaranteed that it'd be able to switch in and set up safely against offense, and it realistically was going to struggle against Blissey, as well as other common defensive Pokemon like Crobat. However, in the hands of a good trainer, Venomoth was potentially one of the most frightening Pokemon in the tier. And to say that with former OUs like Infernape, Scizor, Latias, and Blissey running around, in many ways, it wasn't that different from DPP. The generation where Venomoth first showed it had something to offer. And that's it! So how good was Venomoth actually? Well, it had some seriously rough beginnings, barely eking out usage even in NU. And you can be forgiven for overlooking it since Venomoth isn't a very flashy Pokemon, but starting in the fourth generation, it quietly became legitimate and then some. Despite its stats remaining unspectacular and its typing not fantastic, it showed what a Pokemon can do with access to some great moves and a good ability. Toxic spikes and real stabs alongside Tinted Lens started it off, then Gen Fi gave it the incredible Quiver Dance, making it one of the most dangerous baton passers in the game, as well as becoming a credible threat in and of itself, even becoming too good for Aryu. Before, the idea of Venomoth being too good for any tier was laughable, but now it was legitimate. In fact, in the following generation, it was so nasty that it got banned from Yu Yu of all tiers. You almost never see these kinds of immense jumps from Pokemon with meager stats who don't get any noticeable buffs, but Venomoth certainly pulled it off, even without baton pass it showed that it was not to be taken lightly, getting itself banned from RU once again, entirely on its own merits, and even having a niche in Yu Yu. Gen 7 saw it even become a legitimate Yu Yu Pokemon without any baton pass to speak of, and despite its flaws, it was potentially one of the scariest Pokemon in the game, a metagame accompanied by some of Pokemon's most storied names. This is the kind of Cinderella story we hope for, for the little RBY Pokemon that could. Hail Venomothra. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more be sure to subscribe to false wipe gaming for more weekly pokemon content and in the comments i want to know what do you think about competitive venomoth how would you buff it to make it ou what would you give it to help it exist in vgc whatever it is let me know in the comments also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.